Hey everybody, Jeff Joyner here. And today I'm gonna to tell you the story about the time that I was asked to speak in Ferguson, Missouri on the one year anniversary of the riots and protests that they had there. Uh, before I get into it, make sure if you're enjoying these videos to uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications bell, and you'll be notified whenever I come out with new videos. But uh, back in 2015, I was asked to come speak in Ferguson, Missouri for uh, Ferguson Florissant School District. I uh, was having a meeting of a bunch of their employees and uh, the director who was uh, organizing that meeting uh, called me up, Jeff, we want you to be the speaker. Uh, now, you probably remember if you were around back then uh, that back a, a year previous in 2014, um, there was a shooting. Uh, a cop shot an unarmed black guy named uh, Michael Brown. All hell broke loose. Uh, protests, uh, riots, uh, fires, shootings, um, you know, and it really sparked a, a, a nationwide, uh, you know, pushback and investigation into the events of, of that day. And um, a year goes by and uh, they want me to come speak on the anniversary of it. And I, I told the guy, I said, you know, you really want me as your choice? You know, bringing in a white dude, is that really the move you want to make? And I'll understand if you don't. And he said, Jeff, I've heard you speak before. I know your heart. I know your message. And it's a message of love and healing and positivity and moving forward. And you're the perfect person to come talk to all of our employees uh, at this meeting. And I said, okay, here I come. And so um, I got out there, you know, and usually when I speak for school districts, I do uh, seminars like how to have more fun and less stress and make time fly at work. And I talk about, you know, teamwork and customer service and choose a good attitude. Uh, sometimes I do training on uh, leadership skills or the secrets of America's most effective and happiest school district employees, whatever, that kind of stuff. And um, thought about it, prayed about it, and I said, you know, I'm gonna bring something different here to the people of Ferguson, Missouri. And um, I'm gonna be, gonna be a little more serious and I'm gonna start right off the bat. And so I get, you know, the topic I chose to speak on is how to be part of the solution when the problem has you surrounded. And uh, I got up in front of that audience, and, and I got to tell you, um, mostly minority audience. I would say probably 70% uh, uh, black people, uh, some uh, Muslim folks, some Indian people, people of Indian descent, uh, uh, and, and a smattering of Caucasians, and I was one of them. And um, and I don't know what kind of attitude people came in beforehand, I don't know, but I, but I talked about my views on... Uh, racial relations. And maybe you've heard them before, or maybe you haven't. I'm a firm believer in Dr. Martin Luther King's uh, belief that people should be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I think your skin color is the least important thing about you. I think the color of your skin says nothing about who you are as a person. I think your shirt says more about who you are as a person because you chose your shirt. You chose where you live if you're an adult. Uh, you chose your hobbies and your interests and your passions and the kind of videos you watch. These are choices and they say something about who you are. The color of your skin says nothing about who you are. And so um, I shared these views with these folks and I said, you might have uh, different views. Now, obviously, People have different cultures, right? And there's cultural differences in how people were raised and culture should be celebrated. That's a great thing. But the color of your skin, it's meaningless, right? If my skin is lighter than your skin, you know what that means? My ancestors grew up further from the equator than your ancestors did. <laughs> we are all part of the same race. We are part of the human race. We're human beings. That's our species. And on the inside... We're not that different. It's why I love, you know, maybe you've seen Dr. Ben Carson and um, who uh, dabbled in politics and didn't get very far because he's he's too soft-spoken of a person. Uh, but he's a brain surgeon, grew up in Detroit and uh, went on to be extremely successful brain surgeon. He famously said, you know, you know what I've learned about people being a brain surgeon is that everybody's brain is the same color, right? That on the inside, I just don't, th I think we have more in common than we have different. 
And um, and so I sh hey, and I share with them, you know, my belief that you know, here's how little I think my skin has. I think my whole body has nothing to do with who I am as a person, right? That here, what I believe is that I am a spirit. I have a soul. It's my mind and my will and my emotions, and I live in a body, right? This body, it's just like a coat. It's like uh, the suit that my person wears. And when I'm dead and gone someday, you know, it's going to rot and it's going to turn into dust and who cares, right? That the real me is the spirit inside of me, my, my soul, my mind, my will, my emotions. That's the real you too. And I think the real me, which is a spirit, and the real you, which is a spirit, we have potentially a lot in common spiritually that just has nothing to do with our skin color. And so um, I, I shared that perspective with those folks. Um, and I shared about, you know, focusing on what you can control, right? You can't control what the police do. Hey, if you want to protest, protest, feel free. I think most of us would agree if you start shooting people and burning things down, that's not protesting, that's rioting. If you go rob a store and steal a bunch of TVs, that's not a protest, that's a robbery. But hey, right, the right to peacefully assemble and protest is as important in this country as the right of free speech, the right to bear arms, everything else. And so, but, but the truth is, it's really not going to change much, I don't think. I think you as an individual have way more power to change the world with how you treat people. That if you just treat people with love and with kindness and you take your eyes off yourself and you focus on helping other people have a better life, serve other people, that's how you make the world a better place. And you can make way bigger difference doing that than you could ever doing marching around with a sign in your hand. That's my personal belief. And so that was my challenge to these folks that were working for uh, the school district in Ferguson. I said, hey, you know, if I could be so bold as to tell you what I think this community needs, in some ways it's none of my business, but I've been invited here. Here's what I think this community, it doesn't need more cops, less cops, cameras on the, I mean, wh whatever. We can have conversations and, and debates about that. That's up to you and your community to decide what you certainly don't need are more politicians, right? All the politicians, all the community leaders flocked to get a microphone and to get some attention. And um, and I tell people all the time, you know, those people's intentions are pretty transparent. Anybody who's trying to unify you based on the color of your skin or separate you from someone based on the color of your skin, those people either want money or power or both. There is a lot of professional racists in this country that you know are making money on the industry of racism. And the more they can stir up conflict, the more money they make, the richer they are. I'm not gonna mention their names, you probably know who they are. But they are profiteering on racial hatred and division. And I can't stand it, can't stand it. And so I, I told these people, hey, you know what I think the community of Ferguson needs? It needs more school lunch workers and teachers, and custodians, and bus drivers, and librarians, and school secretaries who are serving children, who are showing love, modeling kindness, demonstrating for these kids of the next generation what it's like to be a decent human being. They don't always see on TV what it means to be a decent human being, and if they go on the streets, they don't see what... But if this community is to have any hope, it's the people in this room. It's not CNN and Fox News. It's you. It's you. That you have more power to change the world by serving some food to a child in the cafeteria with a smile and knowing their name, knowing if they got their braces off or got a haircut, noticing them right? Knowing God, you're so much more likely to impact the world doing that than you are going and burning a police car you know, or whatever. And so, but you have the power. Everybody watching this video has the power to change the world by how you act, how you show love and kindness. Now we live in the world we live in so twisted that some people think that if you show love and kindness, that's actually showing, hey, if you don't, if you don't agree with exactly what they agree with, well, then you're hateful. Don't let those people twist the obvious reality that when you are kind to people, when you put other people's needs and feelings above your own, uh, that's not that's love, right? And so I shared my views and um, told some stories, and uh, you know the people laughed and the people cried and they enjoyed the session. And afterwards, I, I really didn't know how it would be received. I, I never really know, 
uh, standing ovation, probably the longest standing ovation I ever had. And afterward, I stayed there for two hours as people lined up to come forward and introduce themselves to me, give me a hug, thank me for being there. And a lot of them told me their story. It was interesting, you know, the most common thing I heard from those folks, they said, hey, those people you see on TV that are rioting, that is not us. We don't know who they are. We've never seen any of those people. The people who live in this community, we're all at home with our families with the door locked. They said they bust in all of those protesters, professional protesters that got bust in and they gave them bricks and Molotov cocktails and baseball bats and had them tear up their community because they wanted to make a political statement. And, uh, and they were just about mad. They were more mad about that than I was because it was their community that was getting torn up. But, uh, but to see the outpouring of love from those amazing people and, um, and several of them said, hey, thanks for speaking the truth in a world where the truth is not always welcome. And, uh, you know, drove my rental car back to the airport, flew out of town. I was like, what a, what a cool experience. Boy, am I glad that I got an opportunity to participate. And uh, I hope that community is still healing and growing. If it is, I'm telling you, it's not the politicians and the reporters that are making the difference. It's the people who are serving kids, the parents, the teachers, the school workers, um, the friends, the people who are serving and helping and showing love. That's how you change the world.